Hello guys, how is it going? This is Peter here. Today I will talk about raptor farming. People find me quite often with questions like how can you kill the raptor boss? Why can't I farm them? Could you see my run please? And tell me what I'm doing wrong. So I've decided it's time to make a guide as detailed as I can and give you some tips, tricks and show some common mistakes too. Anyway, there is a big difference between raptor farming during an event and on an average day. Events like Halloween, Christmas, Anniversary, Sweet Treat make this farm quite profitable, but if there is no event going on, rather choose something else. I mean, you can still get unit golds and bones, iron from the weapons, but I would rather do this on a special event for event drops. By the way, there is a debate which is better for event item farming, raptors or wild tears. I would vote for raptors. I feel like I can kill more foos here in the same amount of time. But I'm gonna test it in the future with, uh, in my opinion, people only choose wet tears because of the lack of success at raptors. But first thing first, some background information for you guys. Whether Paragon, Ranger or any other class is your favorite profession, doesn't matter because any class can solo raptors under certain circumstances. I admit the easiest is Warrior because their armor is the strongest, the Necro and Dervish in this order, but I will show you an example for every 10 professions. In general all of these builds rely on either 100 blades or WoW strength simply because these two skills work better and better as there are more and more enemies. The method is relatively simple, you aggro a lot of raptor nestlings, bring some blocking skills to stay alive, ball at the boss, spike with either VOS or 100 blades and with the help of Mark of Pain they all die. This works well for Dervish, Necro and Warrior using a Paragon hero. Warriors can solo without a hero too using Mindbender for instance, and guess I could make a working build for Dervish too but this is unnecessary, hero will not reach drops if you send him away and just makes the runs safer and faster. Ok these are the top 3 but there are 7 more professions and believe me they can also kill all 30 c raptor nestlings and Rikov too. They have almost the same build as the warriors but they need a hero or several heroes to put down a spirit called Edge of Extinction. Since these professions need the warrior secondary they can't use Mark of Pain which is a necro skill. Ergo they need a bit of help to provide enough damage for Rikov. This is why they need the spirit. Good to know at 16 Beast Mastery the spirit deals 52 damage to all raptors each time a raptor dies. And since we can easily kill the small raptors with 100 baits because their HP and armor is kind of bad, their death will trigger the spirit and deal like 1500 damage to Rikov. What I have said so far sounds simple but takes time and practice to learn and I have failed many times too at the beginning, but definitely worth the effort. I'm going to show you an example run now, explain as much as I can, slow down the clip or even stop it when uh, necessary. Since I'm a fan of Dervish, apologize but Dervish will be the first, then Warrior, Necro and the other professions. One more thing, the proper equipment, armor, runes, extra armor on weapons, on shields all make the runs safer. In some of these clips I didn't have everything stated on PvX wiki, but I have a lot of experience with raptor farming. If you are a beginner and in the learning phase, make sure you have all the possible help. First of all, make sure you have the Azura title activated and have a hero with a similar build like mine and disable all the hero skills. We always start the runs with the rezoning to save time, just go out, come back and out again. This way when you type slash resign you get teleported close to the portal. Pick up the Azura bounty if you need and use fallback or incoming on the hero bar. Sometimes the Angrodons spawn very close, if that happens try to run close to the cliff on the right side or just resign and try again. Ok we reach the cave entrance without problems, stop here and micro enduring harmony, stand your ground, make haste and can't touch this on your character, then use the flag and put the hero far away from this place. Common mistake, don't use another speed boost or the raptors will scatter, make haste is more than enough. At this point dervishes have to use Synod of Mystic speed to prevent interrupts on their enchantments and use Mark of Pain on the first raptor. I haven't mentioned yet, one mark of pain is not enough to kill Rikov, except if you are a necro. Warriors and dervishes need two maps. This limits our time a bit since uh, mark of pain has 30 seconds duration. Because of this I always try to steal a few meters and start my run as deep in the cave as I can. So mop on the raptor, then use tab on your keyboard, this will target another raptor. 
we put the second mob on that one. You can do this part at the bowling phase too, but people tend to forget which results in Rikov staying alive. And usually people don't even know they need two maps and are surprised when I tell them. Ok, so I'm running now, try to get as many raptors as you can, but I warn you, if you wait for too long, the first mob will be over. If there are raptors in this left corner too far to reach, I rather skip them to save time. Doesn't really matter if you only kill 30 or 31, drops will be almost the same. Don't stop during the run, try to go as straight as you can, avoid detours, those will slow you down and come to this spot. This is a good one, in theory you can stop in the middle of nowhere too, but there is a good chance Rikov will avoid one map, but if you can make them ball a bit like at this spot, your chances are better. I will show you another good bowling spot after this run. When you stop, use Mirage Cloak VUST immediately, wait like 1 or 2 seconds, and when enough raptors surround you, activate Armor Sanctity, then Dust Cloak, Pious Fury, mop on the raptor and spike with Eremite's attack. Sometimes a few raptors will scatter during the tanking phase, uh, the next spot can solve that too. There is a cliff in the middle, with a U-turn at the boss you can make very nice balls. I only do this if I have enough time and spawns are not to spread it everywhere in the cave. This is a good way to make sure Rikov gets both Mark of Pains. By the way, if spawns are super bad, I mean raptors spread across the cave like crazy, and you don't have much time, you can try to spike in the middle of nowhere, sometimes that works as well. I will show you some things you can't avoid, I would say if you are a pro, you fail like 5% of the runs. Why? Because we rely on skills which have a certain chance to block, like 80 or 90%, depending on the build, uh, but with bad RNG you will get interrupted very rarely when you use a skill, either Mark of Pain or the attacking skill. Or you can get hit by Rikov once or twice, you can get body blocked, there are a few things we can't influence. Ok, now Warriors build. I have to say this is the easiest of all, their armor versus physical damage is crazy. Then they have Knight's Insignias, which also mitigates damage, shield against piercing damage and extra armor on sword too. The first part is the same, run to the cave using a hero, micro shouts and aggro the raptors. Put mop on the first raptor, then start the run. I haven't mentioned yet, you can run in the other direction of this big cliff too. I do that if mobs come in my way and I see no clear path, but this time it was fine. You can use I am unstoppable a few seconds before the bowling phase, then stop, use protector's defense, worry stance and mark of pain on another raptor. Once the boss is close, activate hundred blades, soldier stance and spike with whirlwind attack. Finish him is only optional, you can take in Doyak Signet or Endure Pain on anything else you want. Looking at my HP loss, I believe those stories that some people max survivor like this, Warrior is the safest choice for raptors. Moving on, Necromancers have that advantage that they can have 16 curses and their mob deals way more damage. That's why they don't need a second mob, but their lower swordmanship deals less damage, so they need to use the Ebon Battle Standard of Honor skill instead. Their method is almost the same as the Warriors, put Mark of Pain on the first Raptor, run, then use the blocking skills and spike. And now time to dust off other characters too and show the edge of Extinction Way. I recommend bringing a full party to give yourself enough time, if you don't do that, the spirit might get killed by the first Raptor group, we only use heroes as meat shields here, but give them some decent builds to survive longer. The next 7 builds are all the same except the first skill, that one skill is profession dependent but definitely have to survive. Everything is the same till the raptor cave, get the bounty, do the reason trick etc. At the cave, micro your ranger's hero spirit and then use enduring harmony, make haste, stand your ground and can't touch this and put the hero somewhere in the direction of the patrolling raptors. It's important that they interfere or the spirit will die. Rangers have a whirling defense, it can be great help during the run, aggro as many raptors as you can, don't stop at the usual spot, but rather try to tank them somewhat close to the spirit. The range is like twice the character circle on the compass, and use skills in this order, I am unstoppable, then protector's defense, soldier stance, worry stance, hundred blades and whirlwind attack, if the boss is there. Many times the boss stays alive with a very small amount of HP, if this happens, just use finish him. 
I will start the clips from the interesting part. Monk this time, shielding hands is a great skill to reduce incoming damage for a short period of time. As you can see the spirit was killed just seconds after my spike. This is why we need more mid shield heroes. Elementalist now with ward against melee. The ward has to be used after protector's defense or the raptors will easily interrupt that. By the way, twisting jaws hurt when the ranger's hero's shout ends. Mesmer's point of view now. Physical resistance is a great skill against melees. The extra armor comes in handy while running. Then the usual blocking skills and spike method. Paragons have blade turn refrain on their extra slot, some extra blocking chance and their base armor is 80, so they can tank better than other professions. Ritualists have blind was Mingson as an extra skill, this is an item which blind enemies when dropped, but don't drop it until at least a good amount of raptors are around. And for last, the assassin, they have Unseen Fury, this is a stance which blinds enemies for a few seconds. Make sure you use it before the other ch stances. I think it's best if you use Protector's Defense, wait a bit for the mobs and blind them after that. As you can see my runs were not perfect, a couple times the Paragon Shout can touch this runoff and reconstruct me with Twisting Fangs. Also my equipment was far from perfect, I only used my default PvE gears had the wrong headpiece usually and still I was able to kill them. So guys, if you have the perfect gear, this is definitely possible to do. One more tip, if you run into measure for measure inscriptions here, which will happen many times, put that mod onto a great conch or on a greater sage blade. The shield gives easily 100 plus plies of glittering dust and the sword gives a good amount of iron. So guys, I really hope this guide will help many of you and result in successful raptor farms and many stacks of even drops. If you still have questions, feel free to ask, write a comment and as always, thanks for watching and see you next time.